imagined I would be where I am today. Between a better job and a better life, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. If maintaining your network is like drinking from a fire hose, or your user's cloud experience is suffering because you're stuck in the weeds, when there's so much on your plate, downtime becomes the norm. And fighting off malware has you chasing your tail. Maybe it's time to try intent-based networking with Cisco DNA. It automates your network, keeps the business secure, helps prevent downtime, and keeps users, devices, and apps connected securely every time. We're taking the busy out of running your network so you can focus on bigger things. Today, every company on the planet is looking at a new reality. When it says that you're no longer tapping into a cloud, you're unleashing its full potential. Adapt to change faster. Connect anyone to anything anywhere faster. You want to grow your business? Boom. This is the new reality made real. And this, this is the bridge to get you there. Cisco, the bridge to possible. National Instruments had a predicament. Bandwidth demands were on the increase. And while growth is good, their IT budget wasn't keeping pace. Not so good. IT needed to deliver more bandwidth to offices around the world while keeping spending under control. That's not so easy. Suddenly, the company that helps engineers accelerate innovation found themselves needing help. Oh, and it needs to be fast, flexible, affordable, and secure, too. A tall order, but by no means an impossible one. Not with the decision to turn to us, the people who invented the network in the first place. Using a Cisco SD-WAN solution in Cisco services, we massively increased their bandwidth. Where their budget held them back, we propelled them forward. Now, most companies would be delighted right there, but we went further. Network deployments are faster than ever. And where their old network generated problem tickets faster than anyone could count, the number of WAN-related tickets has decreased 70% in the past year. All of this to prove that between those frozen processes of yours and free-flowing productivity, there's a bridge. Tell us what you're imagining, and we will build the bridge to get you there. Domino's customers have one thing in common when placing an order. They're hungry. They want their pizza, and they want it ASAP, if not sooner. So Domino's began looking for ways to simplify the ordering process. That's when they called Cisco. From the data center to the store, Cisco built a secure, scalable infrastructure that helped streamline ordering. In other words, it got hot food to hungry customers faster, no matter what platform they ordered from while giving Domino's an edge over their competitors. Delicious. Between craving a better experience and delivering it, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Wired for Wireless Reinventing Access event. We're at the, an exciting inflection point in our industry. Multi-cloud, Wi-Fi 6, 5G, IoT, they're all coming together to revolutionize the way we work and run our businesses. All of us are looking at how to navigate through these transitions, and we have a great lineup of speakers to give you perspectives on how to think about your access network of the future. During today's virtual event, I'll discuss what I'm seeing from the market and technical forces that are driving these changes and shaping the industry. And I'll discuss how we at Cisco are solving these challenges. Then, 
Scott Harrell, Sachin Gupta, and Todd Nightingale will talk about how Cisco is reinventing access, and you'll be the first to hear about several new innovations to support the next generation access network. Immediately following, Susie Wee will lead two discussion panels. The first features several wireless industry leaders and device manufacturers. We'll discuss challenges, opportunities, and the timelines for the shift to Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. For the second discussion, she'll talk to several Cisco, Cisco customers about what they learned from previous technology transitions, as well as their experiences with our new products. And finally, at the close of today's virtual event, you will be provided the links that will help you discover more about today's introductions. So let's get started. Today's announcement supports our two-year journey for delivering intent-based networking to our customers. This announcement focuses on access, the campus, the branch, and wherever users work, and how Cisco is reinventing access to be a truly unplugged and uninterrupted experience, as it should be. But first, let's set a little context about what we're seeing in the industry when we talk about the network intuitive and reinventing networking. Let's step back and, and talk about why does networking have to change and what that change looks like. So there's two big things going on in our industry. The first one is all about what you guys understand. The enterprises are expanding to the cloud. The cloud is the seminal technology trend of our era, and everybody is adopting it. Except it's a little different than what we thought just a few years ago. It's not about moving to the cloud. It's about expanding to the cloud. The cloud is now part of a larger computing environment that all of us deal with. And it's not just one cloud. It's multiple clouds. And then after that, every enterprise has to think about the next generation of digital experience. How do they deliver the experience that their customers, their employees, all of their partners want to experience? And that's an ongoing process. It's not just one transition. It's an ongoing process of always delivering that next generation digital experience. Well, when we put these two together, CIOs are dealing with a very different environment and set of challenges than just a few years ago. On one side of their infrastructure, it's all about users and devices. More users, more devices, whether it's IoT or the devices that everybody brings into the office today in their own devices, just an explosion on that side of the network. Users are moving around. It's all about mobility. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to connect to apps and data. Applications and data that are also changing in real time, whether they're in the cloud, still in a private data center, we now have this dynamic environment of how do we connect users and devices to applications and data that are always on the move. What this means is the entire networking infrastructure has to be reimagined and rebuilt for this digital world. It's not just about the data center. It's about the entire network all the way from the user to the application, the campus and access network, the branch, the IoT and OT domains, the data center, cloud providers, service providers, and finally, what may be the most important of, of them all, security. I think of these as all the different networking domains, and they're all being changed, and they all have to evolve to be ready for this world that we deal with today of how do we expand to the cloud and how do we adopt the next generation of digital experience. But here's the key. It's not just about all of these evolving independently. They're all interrelated. And how do we pull these together into what we call an intent-based multi-domain architecture? This new architecture is how do we evolve each domain and how do we bring them together to solve this problem of connecting users and devices to applications and data. And that's what Cisco has been building. And when we talk about reinventing networking, that's where we're going. It's, it's reinventing each one of those domains and then pulling them all together. And this is something that only Cisco can build, the multi-domain architecture for the future. It sits at the intersection of users and devices, applications and data to securely connect any user on any device over any network 
to any application. That's the big picture of what we're building. But again, today, let's get back to where the exciting news is, and that's in the access network, in the campus. It's all about reinventing access. It's incredibly exciting. We started on this journey over 18 months ago when we launched the Network Intuitive and talked about reinventing network with the launch of the Catalyst 9300. And so now I'm gonna invite Scott Harrell to come up here who runs the, the enterprise networking business for us. And he's gonna take you through all the exciting announcements we have throughout the rest of this launch. Thank you, David. It is truly a great day to be here. You know, we're super excited about some of the new products we have coming out uh, and then we're gonna talk to you about and some of the new partnerships that we've made. As David said, my name is Scott Harrell. I lead the enterprise networking business here at Cisco. And as part of that role, I get a chance to talk to hundreds of customers just like you. And I wanted to start by sharing some of those top questions that I hear when I talk to you, what, independent of what industry you're in, what vertical you work in. And one of the things that I always talk to customers about is IoT, the Internet of Things. Everything is connected and now everything is on. When we talk to customers all over the world, they're having all kinds of new devices hit their networks, whether it's for outcomes like smart buildings, or maybe it's robots for manufacturing, or maybe it's medical equipment that's now IP connected. We're seeing all kinds of new applications for digitization in, in, in businesses. And this has profound expectations, uh, impacts on the expectations of the network. The second big thing that I talk about when we talk about trends is around immersive experiences. But what's coming next is even more exciting. What's coming next is technologies like AR, augmented reality, things like VR, virtual reality. And these are gonna have even more implications on the network. And you know, what's really exciting about these is you think about your own world and perhaps you have kids like me, or perhaps you went to school at one point in your career and you had to study history. And when you studied history, you had to learn all these dates and memorize all these dates. And it was, it, frankly, for me at least, it was super boring. But I think about with the, with the application of something like VR into the classroom, now I could actually go to the battle site. I could actually go to the famous speech and I could experience it. And I'm, I'm telling you, I will learn it much better that way. The last big trend I talk to customers about is security. Security is fundamental to every CIO. This is one of the biggest priorities for every board in the world. And what we're seeing is an evolution of, of, of what the attackers are trying to achieve. Historically, attackers mainly came to steal data. And now we're seeing them actually come at a new attack vector, which is we're gonna attack availability. And what do I mean by that? Think about ransomware. This is absolutely an epidemic. That's a much different attack scenario. And so as a result, you need to defend it much differently than you did in the past. So with all these different trends, when you think about IoT, when you think about uh, immersive experiences, you think about security, what does it mean for the network? Well, it means that you have to reinvent access. We believe everybody that's connected to a network needs an unplugged and uninterrupted experience, whether you're an end user or whether you're a device. This is what you absolutely need from the network. How we do this is by delivering a wireless-first, cloud-driven, data-optimized, and always secure experience. And what do we mean by wireless-first? What does it take to actually provide a wireless-first world? It means that now that wireless network has to be always on. It has to be reliable. The second thing is it must be scalable. When we think about scale, there's kind of two dimensions. There's the dimension where you have many more things that are now connected to your network than ever before. There's also the fact that these things often require incremental bandwidth and sometimes lots of incremental bandwidth. And so now your wired network itself needs to be adapted for this wireless first world. And the last piece is about security. And this really needs to be thought about end to end. I also said that the network of the future, when you reinvent access, needs to be cloud driven. And what does cloud-driven mean? Well, cloud-driven means either that I can be managed from the cloud or I can actually be tethered to the cloud with an on-prem instance. And so that when you need new updates or when you need new capabilities, they can be dropped down automatically into your environment. The second thing is around the use of data, both to provide global and local insights. We can start to provide those types of insights um, using the cloud as a, as a power mechanism to actually give those kind of insights to you. Proactive operations, one of the biggest things that cloud can provide is that ability for us to interact with you as a customer in a much more proactive way. Now with cloud tethering, we can actually understand in real time what's going on and actually be very prescriptive in our engagement. This totally transforms the IT experience 
and leveraging the cloud, we can really change how you, how you actually deliver services to your business. The third piece is around data. You know, when you think about the sea of data that's now available from everything in your network, all the different APs, all the different switches, they all can produce massive amounts of data that you can leverage to impact your business, to impact your IT operations, and to impact your security operations. To do all these outcomes, though, you need to take a holistic approach to networking. You need to look at it from every layer of the network and understand how it's going to play into delivering these outcomes. It's a super exciting time. The future of access is absolutely now. But what's even more exciting is we're, even, we're adding to it today. Welcome, Todd and Sachin. How's it going? Thanks, Scott. It's a, it's a great day. Super excited to be here. But you know, we talked about the future of access. But what's even more exciting is the future of wireless. And there's all kinds of new industry terms out there. So Todd, can you maybe uh, break that down for our customers a little bit and how they should be thinking about them? Sure, sure. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have been working in Wi-Fi my entire career. And that entire time we have dealt with the alphabet soup of Wi-Fi, .11b and G and A and N and God knows what. And finally, we are putting that behind us. The new Wi-Fi standard, which was briefly called .11ax, is now Wi-Fi 6. This is the newest, highest performing Wi-Fi. We can put Alphabet Soup behind us and push into Wi-Fi 6, the newest Wi-Fi standard. The cellular folks, they've been on this numerical track for a while. After 3G came 4G, and now we're starting to talk about 5G. And this combination of 5G cellular and Wi-Fi 6 it's really going to be a very powerful wireless ecosystem for the future. Wi-Fi 6 is here today. It provides best-in-class indoor connectivity. 5G is just around the corner. It's going to cover the world with outdoor connectivity. And these two technologies together is going to give us truly ubiquitous coverage for a whole new generation of wireless experiences. And so, you know, what I'm curious about, though, before we get into the products is, you know, Todd and Sachin was why customers should be so excited about Wi-Fi 6. Well, there's there's some great benefits that Wi-Fi 6 provides. The first big one is up to four times the capacity. So all those bandwidth hungry applications, new endpoints, now get much more capacity from the network. Lower latency, much more deterministic performance. So for everything connecting, we can have unique sort of performance that they are capable of getting from the network. So those immersive experiences, uh, Scott, that you talked about, right. now really become possible. You know, it's not just these high performance, low latency changes with Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 also has an amazing innovation around power save mode, which is going to allow devices operating under battery power to have enormously uh, better wa battery life. And that's can, that can help us support a whole new generation of IoT devices and all kinds of new use cases. And it's not just. IoT, battery, and immersive devices. Sometimes these things merge. We're also launching brand new Cisco cameras and, and, and VR experience. And that's an IoT device that's a sensor, but it's also really a um, beautiful immersive experience. I think Wi-Fi 6 is just going to support these types of experiences uh, in an amazing way. You know, uh, and the standard is, is really, really cool, but I can't help but notice this is a super sexy set of access points that are set, sitting over here. Uh, at Cisco, we love product launch day, and today is no different. Uh, we are launching a whole new line of Wi-Fi wi 6 APs, both in the Catalyst side of the house and the Meraki side. And these are beautiful devices. They just make you want to pick them up and touch them. Uh, these are the highest performing wireless devices we have ever built. Um, they support these Wi-Fi 6 features with lower latency, higher performance, better battery life. Um, but it goes beyond that. The Catalyst devices have custom RF Cisco ASICs that provide layer one all the way through layer seven visibility. The Meraki APs have dedicated scanning radios. And these features allow us to get true visibility of what's really happening on our wireless networks. And it and allows us to provide a whole nother level of assurance so that we can finally ask our networks to take better care of us. And Scott, like you were saying before, the networks can notify us when there's a problem instead of us having to hear from our users. I think our users and, and the devices will love that as well. These access points are also built for IoT, so they're multilingual now. So they actually not go well beyond Wi-Fi 6. They can speak BLE, they can speak Zigbee or Thread, and really connect with anything that's connecting to uh, this wireless network in the protocol that it understands. So these access points are not just Wi-Fi 6 access points, they're IoT access points as well. Exactly. 
that's super cool. Very, very, very exciting, especially when you combine it with the battery life savings that Todd talked about earlier. You know, when we think about the, the standard itself, it, it's, it's a pretty impressive standard. Um, but we're also working across the industry. We're working with our partners that are across the industry to make sure that the standard comes to life. You know, Todd and Sachin, can you talk to me a little bit about that and kind of what those ecosystem partnerships look like? Sure. You know, there's not a Wi-Fi connection without the devices on the other side. And we've been lucky enough to partner with our friends at Samsung and Intel with their newest pre-release devices to be able to test real Wi-Fi connections, real Wi-Fi 6 connections in real environments. And it's been an amazing partnership. We've been able to test all of these features. We've been able to do real performance benchmarking. And that means that when these devices launch, they will be tested and verified and running state-of-the-art Wi-Fi 6. Uh, but you know, we're not stopping there in terms of uh, just at interoperability. We're really going beyond with the ecosystem. So one of the things that you might have experienced, Scott, is you get into an airport or facility to get onto Wi-Fi, got yeah, that splash you, page. Yeah, you got the splash text. page, but then you also sometimes, if you're international, you got the text back. You got to so you love it, take, right? Uh, it drives me <laughs> crazy. Like yeah, it, it drives everyone crazy. Yeah, right? so, so is that going to get better? Yes. So we're happy to introduce open roaming. So open roaming allows you to seamlessly onboard onto a Wi-Fi network. That's basically what it does. It's a consortium that brings identity providers and access providers together to enable that experience. So I'll give you one example of this. At Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, this happened a few months ago, we partnered with FIRA, which is the conference center in Barcelona, and with Samsung that provided the identity. And more than 3,000 users of Samsung phones were able to seamlessly onboard to Wi-Fi. So imagine the world going forward, Scott. So they walked going, from the outside where they were connected via 4G. They connected at the airport. And they connected they got the airport, in the facility automatically. They were on Wi-Fi. They were on Wi-Fi. Uh, that's awesome. So as I, we grow this consortium and more identity providers join, more access providers join, imagine this world where you can walk in anywhere and you're on the network. I love it. I'm looking forward to that world. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Hey, you know, we talked a lot about the access points, and we talked about a lot about Wi-Fi 6, but it, this has implications on the on the switching as well. We talked earlier about the need to build your wireless network with your uh, your wired network with your wireless network in mind. You know, how does this new standard how does it impact um, my switching access and my access layer? Yeah, you know, over the last uh, few years or so, wireless access points have really driven a lot of the innovation that we've seen on the access switching side. They, in particular, they really drove this move to multi-gig interfaces because there's just so much performance coming out of these devices, even in the last gen. Wi-Fi 6 almost quadruples the performance of these devices, and it's going to drive the performance of those access switches even further. It's why we've launched super high-performing M-gig uh, switching across all of our access lines at Cisco. But that, that bandwidth, that performance has to go somewhere, and that's why we have to take another look at our core network as well. I'm glad you mentioned the core, Todd. <laughs> so you know, just like you spent your career in wireless, I've spent my career on switching. Uh, so I gotta tell you a story. I joined Catalyst Switching, it was my first product management role, 17 years ago on the Cat6K. That product's been out there for 20 years. It's the most successful networking product in history. It's iconic. It's iconic. Okay, it's iconic. Um, and, you know, our customers trust it for its reliability, for its flexibility, for the investment protection they've gotten out of it for 20 years. We have customers who've been running it for more than 10 years. It just runs. Straight up time, Straight 10 years. Straight up time, 10 years. Truly uninterrupted. Truly <laughs> uninterrupted. But now, you know what? It's time to pass the baton. All right. All right? So now we're here today. We're going to introduce, or we're introducing Catalyst 9600 series. That is an awesome looking switch. Uh, we call the access points beautiful. This is a beautiful yeah, switch. This is impressive. This is impressive. <laughs> it's got okay? some meat to it. <laughs> so this switch, now our Cat 6K goes up to two terabits. This switch goes up to 25 terabits. So it's really built with that scale, that cloud scale campus view, built for investment protection well into the future, right? So two more decades that you can get out of this. Fully integrates into intent based networking. Lots of things we talked about, segmentation, software-defined access, assurance, encrypted traffic analytics, all supported here. Switches modular, built from the ground up for those things. Built from the ground up for those things. The modular iOS XC operating system, fully programmable. And so, again, it's a beauty, and it is going to power those networks, those modular core campus networks for multiple decades to come. 
Awesome. Well, this is truly, truly an exciting time. Thank you, Sachin and Todd. Those innovations are, are incredible, and I'm super excited to see those in our customers' hands. I hope you're as excited about the future of networking as I am. Wi-Fi 6 is now, and you need to prepare both your wired and wireless network for it. You need to work with Cisco because only Cisco can deliver an unplugged and un uninterrupted experience for that network that is wireless first, cloud driven, data optimized, and always secure. Next up, we have Susie Wee. She's, she's a networking veteran and the guru of all things programmability. Susie will facilitate a discussion with networking industry experts and customers just like you so you can gain more perspectives on how to build your future access networks right after this brief video. Technology often comes down to a choice. This or that. Do you need 5G or Wi-Fi 6? Mobility or security? Should you be in the cloud or a data center? Do you need this gen or next? The answer to all these questions is yes. Now you don't have to choose because there's one network that's ready for anything. It's called intent-based networking, and it's only from Cisco. A system built for Wi-Fi 6? Yes. And ready for 5G? Yes. And the numerous machine languages of the IoT? Yes. What about security and threat detection? VR, AR, AI? The answer to your question is yes. Intent-based networking from Cisco. Wireless first, cloud-driven, data optimized. Between what's now and what's next, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. A big thank you to David, Scott, Todd, and Sachin for showing us what's available with Wi-Fi 6. This is an exciting time in the industry because Wi-Fi 6 opens up a new chapter in networking. So you've heard a lot from Cisco about why we're so excited about Wi-Fi 6. And now I would like you to hear from industry experts and from our customers about their views. So to talk more about how Wi-Fi 6 and 5G will impact the industry, I'd like to bring up a set of industry experts to tell you more. We're excited about the opportunities that we have with this big advancement of Wi-Fi 6. And what we've done now is brought together a great set of experts from across the industry to talk to you about it. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, what I would like is, first of all, for each of you to introduce yourselves, uh, tell us about the perspective of the industry that you represent, and also tell us about what makes you most excited about Wi-Fi 6. Thank you very much, Susie. I'm Craig Mathias with Farpoint Group. We're an advisory firm that specializes in wireless mo and mobile and been doing that pretty much for the past three decades. Overall, I'm very excited about Wi-Fi 6 because it finally gets us to the point where there's no excuse. You no longer need to look for a place to plug in. Everything that we're going to need to do on the network, we can do with Wi-Fi 6. Hi, I'm Ethan Banks, the co-founder of Packet Pushers. We are a media company with a network of podcasts, and uh, I represent the practitioner, the end users, and the thing about Wi-Fi 6 that I'm interested in the most, OFDMA, the chance to get more people on the air at a time uh, communicating, means uh, we get a lot more throughput and a lot better performance out of our Wi-Fi networks. And good morning, I'm Derek Peterson. I'm the CTO for Boingo Wireless. We're a neutral host provider. What we're trying to do is bring the digital transformation to venues. So you'll find us at airports, which a lot of people know us about, but also stadiums, military, uh, MDU, multifamily. And our job is really to just bring great connectivity and wireless connectivity to those venues. And that's what we're excited about doing with Wi-Fi 6. Excellent. Thank you, Susie. So my name is Roman Alvarez. I'm Director of Open Innovation at Samsung. And our perspective is the user, right? We are actually the device that goes into the hands of the user in their pocket. So we actually are, care a lot about the experience that they're having, the final experience, right? Both for consumers and for business users. And uh, we are very excited about Wi-Fi 6 because actually it's going to uh, provide a, a number of, a number of uh, new features. Uh, I think there's three features that actually we are really excited about, which is first one, it's going to be higher speed. We all expect, you know, a new wireless 
protocol to bring the higher speeds, that's kind of the, the baseline for a new wireless protocol. But also, we're going to have a better performance in very congested environments, concerts, airports, etc., etc. So those are situations where today, actually, Wi-Fi, the current standards, don't actually uh, reach reach the performance that the users, our users want. And finally, better power consumption, right? So one of the pain points that uh, users have with smartphones is actually that uh, you know their phones don't last a full day. And with Wi-Fi 6, we're going to be able to actually get a full day of battery uh, while still being able to stream uh, pictures, videos, et cetera, and use social media. Good morning. Uh, Eric McLaughlin. I'm the uh, general manager of the client business at Intel. So my team is responsible for all the radios that go into PCs, tablets, and those sorts of things. So what, I guess, two things for me on Wi-Fi 6. First of all, it's the biggest thing to happen to Wi-Fi since its inception. And we're grateful to see all the problems that Wi-Fi 6 is going to solve for the end user, many of which have already been talked about here. And I'm also excited because we also deliver 5G, and the interaction between those two technologies is going to be amazing. Excellent. Great. So let's uh, let's jump right in. So and I know that we've already started to talk about it. So what are some of the benefits of Wi-Fi 6? Well, I think it was already said three of the key benefits being power, speed and uh, better access for everybody, I think, is also very important. You know, when you're in a very uh, busy environment, one of the key things is there's you need enough wireless to go around. So we've introduced things like MIMO where we can have more spatial streams, but with OFDMA and some of the new technologies, we can e even give better experiences for those very crowded areas, which is has been a challenge in the past with Wi-Fi, but it gets solved with Wi-Fi 6. And so uh, with Boingo, you guys are in stadiums, you're in airports, so you know about crowded environments. Yeah, crowded environments are, are obviously a big challenge, and, and I think that that's one of the key things is uh, we can't deliver some of the services you want to deliver. So you can think about pathing and trying to do some VR pathing to be able to find your gate or find where the Starbucks is or, you know, do those different things. It's really hard to do in an environment where you have a lot of people trying to do that. With Wi-Fi 6, you're going to be able to enable those kind of great applications. And that's the real beauty of Wi-Fi 6. I think you've hit the nail on the head here. We love to talk about gigabits per second of throughput. That's wonderful. But it really is now with Wi-Fi 6 about the capacity to handle all those users with all those devices and all those applications simultaneously. Yeah, and, and everyone's happy. And the interaction between those devices is also key. So Wi-Fi 6 allows you to not just focus on your phone and staring down. Now you can interact with your watch the, the environment around you, and so that's going to be very important. So IoT and this Internet of Things is a big part of what's going to be enabled by Wi-Fi 6. If you think about the previous standard, uh, the average number of Wi-Fi devices that we had with previous standards in a household was about five Wi-Fi devices connected at the same time. Now it's double that currently, and some projections actually uh, are, uh, are actually estimating about 50 devices per household that will be connecting to Wi-Fi in the next few years, right? So this is really the problem we're trying to solve with Wi-Fi 6. So in our case, for instance, Samsung, it's actually the major provider of consumer electronics. So we have smartphones, wearables, they're all connected to the internet. We have uh, appliances, we have TVs, etc. right? So they're all connected to Wi-Fi, right? So uh, in order to support that growth in our, in our appliances, in our devices, in our consumer electronics, we actually need to uh, improve Wi-Fi. And this is why we are super excited about this partnership that we have with Cisco. And it's so exciting because it's kind of like Wi-Fi has been around. And, you know, to actually be able to understand that it's going to change, it's going to advance even more, that that's really exciting. Um, but the question is, is Wi-Fi 6 now? Like, so Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so same name, but we're choosing the Wi-Fi 6 to go with. Um, you know, how do we view it? Should people switch to that now? Uh, they started with, you know, 802.11ac. Should they move on? What are, what are your thoughts on that? There's a couple of things here to consider. One is uh, we're still working on the standard. We're almost there, right? So now products are finally coming to market. And it seems reasonable that if you are at a refresh cycle, it's time for you to update your wireless. Yeah, you want to go with AX. That is going to uh, future-proof you. It's going to give you the opportunity as more and more clients come on to uh, give them an AX experience. So there's no reason to not go with AX now. We're, we're, we're just about there with the standard. The products are here. Uh, let's do it. Let, let's go that direction. So you will absolutely get some benefits today. But even if you don't plan on deploying right away, we've been encouraging our clients 
to build alpha networks and to some degree beta deployments as well, just to get experience with the technology. It's far enough along now that it's these are going to hit the market like a ton of bricks very quickly, and you don't want to be sitting there in six months or a year and saying, oh yeah, that Wi-Fi 6 stuff, I really should be doing something with that. that, that that's actually a really good point because it's not just turn on AX and you immediately get all the benefits. There's there's some tuning that you could be doing. There is understanding of how the uh, OFDMA is going to work in your environment, how that might interact with uh, multi-user MIMO. Um, and getting all of that working and tuned for your environment will take some time. I like that idea of an alpha yeah. uh, network. Huge number of technical innovations. So. Yeah. And we can share a little bit of that, that Samsung, Cisco, and Boingo have done an alpha test mm. at uh, John Wayne Airport uh, down in Orange County. Yeah, so please tell us more California. about that now. Yeah. So, so, you know, the idea was to just showcase the speed that you can get, and we've seen that speed. So even on the AC devices with the AX access points that were provided by Cisco and the phones that we were able to get from Samsung, we saw great improvements across the board mm. in speed. And I think that that's key, but in addition to that, when you start doing that network planning, it changes a little bit because it used to be when you were planning out in a big environment like an airport, you would have to manage your RSSI and your SNR, so your challenges of building a network across all these different channels with all these different people connecting. You'd have to think through how many people do I want per access point and change your models of how much uh, you had to put in. Uh, we've actually been holding off for AX to be released so that we could actually do some of those uh, upgrades that we want to do because it ends up changing the RF um, diagnostics and everything else that you're trying to do to be able to great, create a great network. Mm. Excellent. Um, can you guys talk a little bit, I know it was just referred to that there's actually benefits to deploying a Wi-Fi 6 access point even before the clients are ready. Um, so can, can you guys talk to that a little bit? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of benefit, there's a lot of learning going on when you're establishing a network, especially in a, a very um, dense environment. Yep. You have to focus on channel management and how you're going to manage those channels. And there's a lot of change happening with 5G as well. There's new technologies like CBRS and Multifire and LAA and, and 5G and 5G and R and all these new uh, technologies that are coming out where you've got to do some additional channel planning. So as you start seeing those technologies work together and you start planning how you're going to run your cables to be able to put nodes in different locations and run your power, it's very important that you start ahead and you start planning all of these technologies together because you want to create great experiences across all the networks, all the different wireless, all the different IoT uh, solutions that you're going to be putting into uh, an environment. Excellent. So yes, if you're architecting your network to go forward, well, you need to architect. And there's this whole thing, like a friend was doing gardening, and he said, you have to be an architect, not a hacker. <laughs> uh, same thing as you're kind of deploying your some of your next-gen uh, systems to handle new things. And, and you really don't want to un underestimate the opportunities here. I mean, we, we've mentioned OFDM and BSS coloring. We could go yep. on all day with all the cool technologies in here. But how these will actually work in your environment, let's face it, You've got to try it. You've got to begin ga gaining experience. Turn some things on, shut some things off, tune it. As, as clients become more available, this will certainly become uh, a, a standard activity in every shop. But even today, we think it's not too early to begin trying those things. There is more here than meets the eye, probably more than any previous generation. Yeah, and what we're finding is, uh, and then even in advance of going ahead and putting your Wi-Fi 6 access point in with the clients that are out there today, you still get an improvement. You mm -hmm. get an improvement yeah. in capacity and the number of clients you can serve. And some of our customers will be talking to, to what they've seen in that and mm. how important that is to them. Um, we've been now talking about the devices because the devices are coming along and we're like, is that in the future? But we actually have Intel and Samsung here who could tell us how close or how far away is that for our so devices. We are, we are there already, actually. Yeah. So we, Samsung has been actually the, the world's first uh, provider of uh, Wi-Fi 6 enabled smartphone, our Samsung Galaxy S10. We announced that in February, back in February. And uh, we, they're already available in stores. You can go to your, uh, to your uh, cellular store, you can go to IT provider and get a Samsung Galaxy S10 that supports all the latest uh, standard for Wi-Fi 6. Uh, we're also actually looking at uh, launching a new phone very soon that will support both Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. So 
essentially if you go with this kind of phones, there is no limits actually. And that's what we want to emphasize to our customers is that if you have a business, you have an enterprise, and you want to have the best connectivity for your, for your uh, workers, you want to have the best productivity, you want to have no downtime, you have to want to have the best throughput, uh, Samsung is really the ideal partner for that. There is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, new technologies that Wi-Fi 6 will enable, like VR, AR, that are, it's coming. And actually, those technologies, even though they are, you know, the consumer side is always very excited about that, actually the first applications are going to be on the enterprise, right? So we get a lot of interest from architecture firms, we get a lot of interest from hospitality, retail, et cetera, to be able to leverage those innovations, and Wi-Fi 6 will be uh, an important part for that. Excellent. Uh, Eric from Intel, mm -hmm. we had a great uh, conversation about some of the things that you have brewing and already out there. So can you tell us about what Intel is doing here? You bet. So um, you don't have to wait long for uh, PCs either. Dozens and dozens of devices coming this quarter or next quarter, I guess it would be. And you'll see in the hundreds as we move into the back half of the year. So uh, we're very excited about uh, this technology as well and, and the work that we've been doing uh, to, to comment on some of the things that have uh, been said before is between Cisco and Matt McPherson and his team, as well as Microsoft, we have an enterprise lab at Intel that's about 20,000 square feet, robotics, all the things that are needed to test both static and roaming dense environments. And we've been working together over the last few months to just hone this, these, these products together to make sure that when uh, these things are deployed, whether you're in an a, a AX full network or, or a, you know, a mixed network, that everything works seamlessly and great. So the, the industry excitement and the industry collaboration across all of our teams has been exceptional. Excellent. And Eric, so with that test lab, we've been working very closely together. Yep. What kind of things have we learned and improved upon as we were putting together uh, both, you know, the client side and the network side and really making that work well? Well, I think what we've proven is that we can hit close to two gigabit speeds, right? And uh, in, in, in over-the-air environments, not in a lab, right? Which is, which is huge. We also are seeing that, that uh, the dense networks actually are better. And even in mixed networks, we're seeing better performance. So there's um, no reason to, to wait. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 is now, it's gonna work great when you get it in your, in your environment, whether that's a home or, or a business. Um, by the way, one of the things I love about your Samsung phone is the Wi-Fi 6 logo. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that, I thought that was awesome, so. <laughs> Hey, Eric, you mentioned the two gigabit per second speed. Was that like aggregate coming into the access point from a multitude of clients or just um, a single client? Uh, both. We, we, we get up to two in, in a single client environment, and it's about 1.8 to 1.9, and we're seeing uh, very close to that. Um, and we're seeing better range as well, so better performance at range. I think, I think one of the key things is that we're in the past, when we're creating channels and we're managing networks, we, weren't, we were managing the wireless, we weren't managing the intent that was going on on the network. Mm. And that's really what's changed with how we're, the OFDMA and Wi-Fi 6 and all this stuff works, is the focus is now on the intent of the network instead of focused on the network. And that's where we needed to get. We need to focus on the use cases that are happening inside these venues, the digital transformation that's happening inside of our homes, and all of those different uh, opportunities and focus on the intent of what we're trying to do with that network. And that's really where we start seeing the power of Wi-Fi 6 and the power of what's happening in the industry is f that focus on intention. Yeah, that's amazing. And that uh, certainly matches up with the whole kind of goal that Cisco has around intent-based networking and that we have in the industry to drive it forward there. Um, so we had a lot of fun kind of geeking out on Wi-Fi 6 and its advantages. Let's pop up a level. So what do you guys think are some of the new applications that we'll see coming together uh, for Wi-Fi 6? You know, it's very interesting you mentioned AR and VR, augmented reality, virtual reality. Mm -hmm. right. Mentions that about 80% of demand is expected to come from video, and those are clearly video applications. Yep. But even without those, we're already seeing a lot of networks under strain, just from organizational, not YouTube, necessarily not consumer grade video, but being able to handle that without the buffering and the hiccups and everything else. Wi-Fi 6 is incredibly well suited to that because again, it provisions the capacity and it's designed to work in congested environments. Yeah. I got a great example that I like to use. I was at the Hollywood Bowl, it's one of our facilities. And you know, it's a great icon facility for concerts and, and different things like that. And when we first started putting up a, a, wire, a Wi-Fi network there, 
you'd watch people connect and they'd start automatically connecting and registering and we now you know solve that with passpoint and other technologies but now they automatically connect when they get there to the wi-fi and we're seeing people stream uh, as they're watching the concert, their reactions to the concert, just as much as they're being a part of the concert, they're bringing that concert out to all of their followers in real time. And, in real time. and those kind of enhanced experiences drive people into the venues where they used to be saying, oh, I can just watch this at home. I want to share it with my friends. And there's maybe a better way. They didn't get tickets. Now they can still go there, still share it with all their friends globally right they can share yeah. these experiences and that's great and that's a, you know what wi-fi 6 enables yeah and that's just a really exciting set like for me being a video geek in my <laughs> history and background we've uh, got a actually, solution for you <laughs> <laughs> to actually be able to like just fully live out and build out those video applications um ar vr making those interactive as well right not just a one-way streaming but the interactive uh, is pretty key. Uh, what other kinds of applications do you think and what kind of industries do you think this is going to be most impactful for? I'll give you something that's not at all glossy and, and sexy, but very practical. Yeah. So from an operational perspective, the ability to carve up your Wi-Fi 6 network into different channels <laughs> and adding software that can optimize your environment means that Again, it's not sexy, but from a practical perspective, you're going to get better throughput, less complaints as you deploy Wi-Fi 6 across your environment. It's going to be a better experience for everyone within the company. So it's not, you know, one application, but just everything working better as, yeah. uh, as Wi-Fi 6 gets deployed because you've got that uh, ability to optimize that. We had some of that before, but not with as much fine-grained detail and tuning ability that we have now. Yeah. It's, it's analytics automation and management. And the yeah. introduction of Wi-Fi 6 gives the vendor community a real opportunity here. It's an interruption mm. to say, oh, you know what? We've always wanted to do that. Now we can do it with this new set of products. Mm. And that's another reason why we think people will be upgrading sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I think that, you know, that ability to do that, you know, with the deterministic networking, with, you know, being able to dedicate channels, then you can actually give that um, the application developers even that set channel, so that's why they know they can actually make this stuff work. So I think it's uh, it's very sexy to be able to do that. <laughs> Indeed, I yeah. think that's a great point. We always think about very sexy applications like AR, VR, and that's true on, yeah. the, on the consumer side, gaming as well. I think gaming is going to be huge as well. Yeah, uh, streaming gaming, right? But on the on gaming. the business side, right? So if you look at retail. Uh, you know, the user experience that you want for your customers, you want to give the, you know, Wi-Fi is really part of the user experience, right? So we want to give the best experience to the customers. So you need to have the fastest Wi-Fi, no downtime, uh, quick connection, low latency, et cetera, right? If you look at the hospitality, you go to a hotel, right? So you want to have a great experience, right? If the Wi-Fi doesn't work, which sometimes happens, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you're going to actually, uh, you know, bundle that into the whole user experience, right? So Wi-Fi has become actually a key part of the user experience for for many uh, venues like hotels, right? If you look at uh, first responders, you know, this is really one of the most exciting applications because we're talking about saving lives, actually. We're working with a number of first responders and they're always looking for faster connectivity, dedicated channels, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and, and that may not be very sexy or it might, it might not be very talked about, but we're talking about saving lives and improving safety for, for hey, the public. If you're yeah. in operations, management, analytics, optimization, all of that, it's pretty sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Without that, no one else gets their jobs done. Right. We tend to not think about it all that much, but there's so much innovation there now, again, largely as a result of the availability of Wi-Fi 6. That's right. And one um, of the things we're talking about at Intel, and, and we've shared some of this with our friends at Cisco, uh, is the office of the future, right? How do people work, interact, and get their jobs done as they move from place to place during their day? They do things that require extreme focus. They do things that require, you know, extreme agility. They've got to multitask. They've got to interact locally as well as, you know, globally. And w we see Wi-Fi 6, um, playing not just in access, but in many other parts of the of the network experience that allow people to, to have an office that just works the way they need it to, seamlessly. Yep. Let's talk about uh, IoT a little bit as well. So, you know, you have manufacturing environments, hospitals, different things there. What does Wi-Fi 6 enable in that world? More device density, so you can de deploy more sensors out there, more building controls, more whatever it is of those devices that you need, but then also uh, power, power conservation. Uh, the ability to have those devices go to sleep for longer on a schedule before it, they wake back up again, so you get a better battery life as you deploy those devices. That's in the standard. 
Yeah. Yep. And having those sensors just be able to last longer, right? You're going to want to install those sensors, right. keep them out there. And not all IoT is narrowband. I mean, yeah. think of automated, right. uh, automatic video, uh, image recognition, security right. application surveillance, yep. tremendous amounts of data, but it is machine to machine. There are no humans in the loop for those kinds of things. Without Wi-Fi 6, that's going to be pretty challenging. Yeah. Facial recognition. Exactly. Just, that's right. At Mobile World Congress, as you walk in, and imagine if you go to a game and you don't have to sit there and show a ticket because it's facial recognition, you go right in. We're seeing it show up you know, with clear at the airports and other areas. And you look at those clear uh, kiosks at the airports, they're not connected wired, right? They're wireless. And you can imagine we're doing all those things also wirelessly taking advantage of the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6 can improve those. Exactly. And it's, it's interesting because the thoughts of these types of applications We've, we've had them before, like, oh boy, I wish I could stream video, I wish I could do AR, VR, but here the technology really makes a difference and really enables it. Wi-Fi 6 was designed for that. That's the difference. And yeah, I, I look at it as uh, we always were able to provide an experience. Now we can provide and improve the quality of that experience. A yes. good experience. Yeah. yeah. And with you know the advancements not only in networking but in compute as well, then you start to be able to really bring your machine learning, your AI, like to really get you know video flows coming through, doing video analytics right in the network itself. Yeah. You start to get some really interesting uh, you know opportunities that way as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's not an afterthought anymore. Management, it's real time, and that's key. Yeah. Finally, real time, <laughs> which is awesome. Excellent. So now, let's see. So we've been talking about some of the applications come to, that come together, and we've been talking a lot about you know Wi-Fi itself, uh, but also Wi-Fi six is about the entire network. You know, you have Sooner an MDF, later. you have an MDF, you have an IDF, and you're used to pushing you know 100 meg or gig uh, interfaces between each switch. You got to go 10 gig, you got to go multi gig, and all of those connections. So that's going to require an upgrade in your switches, an upgrade in your back end. And, and that is something that you can do today, and you should be working on to prepare yourself for all of these new applications that we've been talking about. It's time. Yeah. Very uh, time. So, I, Ethan, you're a CCIE yourself, so you've been uh, operating networks. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what's, what's your view from kind of you know, how you deploy networks, how you manage networks? Is wireless just about wireless, or is it about the entire network? So if we go from an enterprise or a campus perspective, it's about that endpoint and managing that endpoint, no matter how they're connected. So you still have a few wired uh, clients out there, sure, but I mean, the majority of them are wireless now. When you onboard that endpoint, how do you do it? What does that look like? What experience do you want to give them? What's their security profile? What applications do they need access to? In what priority? What happens when they're not in the office and they're roaming? They're far away and you need to give them all that same access securely, uh, et cetera. So th that's really what we're talking about now. The network is not, oh, my wireless person, they, they're going to take care of that for me. It's not, you don't think that way anymore. It, it's all about uh, holistic network design. Wi-Fi being one key element uh, you know, of that infrastructure, uh, but the network as a whole has to work together. All the components, we were just talking about switches and uh, of course access points and clients and having all of that work as one thing under one unified umbrella is a, a requirement. You can't you know, piecemeal it all anymore. It's got to all work together and communicate together from a business policy perspective. And, and I'll add, you know, one of the things that I've been focused on is this concept of opt-in and opt-out. And we're, we're going away from opt-in on opt-out. We're going to opt-aware. We need to make people aware of how we're utilizing the networks, that intent that we're creating inside the network for those use cases, and make them aware of that so they can be aware of how their, the network's being used to improve their lives. Instead of saying, oh, you can opt-in and we'll give you this service, or you can opt-out of that service. It's more about hey, are you aware that we can do this if you allow us to be able to provide this experience for you? Yes. And, and that makes us move from thinking about not just the network as the venue or the focus of that switches and the cabling and everything else, but from a global perspective. Because or, or do you want that access to be able to that machine that's sitting in your enterprise? Do you want access to that machine that's sitting inside your enterprise network when you're traveling globally? And how do you uh, enable that access? And then what's the data that's going 
being transferred within that access and then how do you secure that? Mm -hmm. And because you now have real time ability to be able to see that data as it's passing through, you can provide better security measures so you can enable that global access. And that's a very important part of security in the future. It's not about creating firewalls anymore. It's about opening up the ecosystem and having that real-time capability so that you can be able to do that and create that global experience. Mm -hmm. And that type of spread actually goes all the way to the devices as well, because it's the devices holding, and the users that, you know, that people have, the applications that cut across. So uh, how, how, does, how does the device play into it as well, like as we take a look at the whole thing. There's some security issues that we've worked out together as well as connectivity issues. Sure. Do you guys have some views there? Yeah, I think uh, one of the aspects that we've been working hard at, it's roaming. Yes. And uh, roaming both from Wi-Fi access point to Wi-Fi access point, but also roaming from Wi-Fi to LTE and vice versa, and now yes. with 5G and vice versa, right? So we actually have improved that time that it takes from to connect from one access point to another one, and that's one of the things that Wi-Fi 6 enables. And at the end of the day, that's uh, one of the top one of the top uh, complaints, if you want, that you might have from consumers and from business users that when they are using an app and then they move around, they're always on the go, uh, that app might get a disconnection and they might lose actually the connection, they might lose the work, they might actually have mm. to reconnect again, VPN uh, reconnection, etc. right? So no one wants to go through that while they're uh, going around their, their busy day. So Wi-Fi 6 actually enables that kind of uh, fast roaming from Wi-Fi access point to Wi-Fi access point and that uh, purely impacts the user experience. Going into such a transition is not just putting out a new product, but it's really about how the ecosystem works. It's about how the new devices, the new technologies, it's about the applications providing interesting services, you know, connectivity services and beyond. Uh, so getting to this whole you know, new level takes a lot of work. It's, it's heavy lifting, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we feel that we're getting there. Um, do you guys have some uh, final some final pieces of advice and wisdom that you want to share with the audience here? You want to start there and we'll work around? Yeah. I knew you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Since the topic of 5G came up, uh, there's been a lot of confusion, I think, around 5G because when you look at the specs between uh, Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, they're really very similar in gigabit throughput. In general, you can say, well, Wi-Fi is more of an indoor technology and, and 5G is more of an outdoor technology, but that's not entirely true because obviously we want cellular coverage inside of buildings, larger uh, facilities, retail malls, and things like that. And Wi-Fi has also been deployed outdoors in densely populated areas. At Farpoint Group, we actually think of Wi-Fi 6 as a 5G technology. It is not NR. NR, new radio, that's the official standard. But it's so similar. The technology overlap between those two domains is enormous. We still have a lot of work to do in terms of how do we deploy 5G in the unlicensed bands? How do we manage interference? How will upgrades of Wi-Fi deployed in urban areas proceed? But it's so exciting. Even though there are challenges, we know we are going to solve those issues. And we know that end users are going to be happy and productive. Uh, so for me, when I first started looking at, at Wi-Fi 6 a AX, I thought, it's a minor upgrade. It's not really a big deal. And then I started digging in and reading more and reading more. This is a big deal. <laughs> There's a lot going on here with, uh, with Wi-Fi 6. It is a major and significant change. So you know, to, to an operator, to someone who's using wireless today and thinks, I don't, I'm just going to skip this one, I'll wait for Wi-Fi 7 or whatever the next big thing is, uh, you need to look at Wi-Fi 6, you really do. You need to look at all the different technologies that are in there, consider your business and the use cases you have for applications, maybe challenges you have with, uh, with throughput in your business, and then look at Wi-Fi 6 seriously. It is, um, it is definitely worth your time. Even if you're on AC today, even if you just did a refresh within the last couple of years, AX can maybe take you uh, further than you're going right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so mine's a, I love my job, I have to say that. It, you know, I'm a CTO for a company, then we represent venues. And, and our job is to bring that digital transformation to all these different venues. And when you think about what's going on with 5G and with Wi-Fi 6 and with all of the other things that are going on like network function virtualization and, and the changes happening with edge and, and cloud, all this stuff is exciting, it's challenging, but it's way exciting because what we're being able to do with all of these new technologies is finally create the network that back when we started playing around with networks in the internet days, we're 
bridging that digital and that physical gap that's been there forever. Our networks were always not part of our lives. They were uh, adjacent to our lives. We're really bridging that gap. And so for me, it's about tr recognizing that I agree, Wi-Fi 6 is a 5G technology. I, I, I've said it uh, for many years and I'm gonna keep saying it. It's really, when you go into a venue, you want all of this technology together to work together well so that you can create those experiences that you want in there and, and really start taking advantage of the internet you know, that we've created 20, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, depending on how you want to talk about it, but really starting to take advantage of that. And it's exciting. Um, we love to partner with people because it takes an ecosystem, it takes standards, it takes an industry to really make this happen. So we're, we love working with Cisco and we're happy to be here uh, supporting you in this uh, talk about Wi-Fi 6. Thank you. Yeah, so my side, I think a couple of thoughts. The first one is that Wi-Fi 6 is ready. We've actually been doing testing you know, for many, many months with Cisco and Boeing and other partners. And actually it works. We've tested with real users. It's actually deployed already in many venues. So it's actually already here. And the second part is that actually uh, you have to think about why should I upgrade, right? So we work with a lot of uh, uh, enterprises, hospitality, uh, venues. We work with uh, first responders, etc. And uh, when we talk to all those customers, uh, the number one thing that they tell us is that they want to have a very productive workforce. So Wi-Fi 6 is really the enabler to have an extremely productive workforce. You don't have downtime, you have very quick latency, you connect uh, and roam from Wi-Fi access point to Wi-Fi access point seamlessly. So all those features actually uh, essentially enable a very, very productive workforce, which is what businesses really care about. Well, I'm gonna be bold. Um, you don't get the promises of 5G without Wi-Fi 6. You, you can't hit the densification needed. You can't deliver uh, data, the amount and, and, and frequency of need of data without these two technologies working seamlessly together. You can't connect everything, every building, every car in the world without these two technologies working together. So we absolutely agree, the synergies are amazing. There is some overlap, but the synergies are more important. And the ability to, to deliver that connectivity and the, and the data to the people who need it only is going to happen through the combination of 5G and Wi-Fi 6. That's a great point to, to really mm. bring together and nail home. And really, when we bring these things together, uh, then it's really about giving people great experiences and great new services. Thank you for that really insightful discussion. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as we did. We just talked about the difference that Wi-Fi 6 technology makes in the experiences and applications that we can bring to people. And one example where Wi-Fi 6 makes a difference is in supporting large crowds of users with lots of devices. Now let's take a look at one industry, gaming, and specifically esports, with the work that we're doing with our customer, BlizzCon. Our first BlizzCon was in 2005. We had about 8,000 attendees. Fast forward to this year, we'll have 35,000 people or more and 10 million people globally watching online. Cisco provides the crucial underlying network of connectivity for the entire show. The wireless hotspots that enable us to have employee communications, the panels that people are watching, both in person and online, the presentations that you're seeing across the screens at BlizzCon, more bandwidth on our demo areas all of our eSport World Championships. We also utilize Cisco hardware. It's in almost every major part of our network infrastructure for the whole show. The routers and switches that are connecting our PCs, our network infrastructure, and servers that are running our game demos. Cisco's just been a great partner for us in terms of reliability and dependability. Just to have a partner that cares about the BlizzCon experience being as awesome as we'd like it to be, that really gives us a lot of peace of mind. Which means the show is running smoothly and reliably, and the players are having a great time. Between a fan's devotion and global domination, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. That was a really inspiring video, and it reminds us how cool networking can be and what networking makes possible. So, you know, now we just saw a great example of what one customer was doing in the industry, and I'm excited to be with our other customers to talk about what their needs and what the opportunities are for Wi-Fi 6 in their industries. 
So what I'd like to do is just to have each of you introduce yourselves, uh, talk about which company you work for, and then talk about what you're most excited about for Wi-Fi 6. Uh, Jamin Lefebvre with Wild Rose School Division in uh, Alberta, Canada. Um, our school jurisdiction goes from slightly rural to really, really, really rural, um, covering about 20,000 square kilometers, um, 5,000 students, and year over year we continue to see uh, device increases and bandwidth demands that uh, are very difficult to, to contend with. Great. Uh, Reza Rasulian with uh, Carnival Cruise Line. Uh, Carnival owns uh, nine uh, brands uh, in the cruise industry. Uh, we make up roughly 50%, just over 50% of the industry. Uh, we have uh, 12 million guests a year on our ships. Uh, we have a very interesting business. Um, we have casinos, obviously hotels, a transportation vehicle for our guests, um, restaurants, uh, uh, slide, water slides, <laughs> uh, you, you name it, we have it. Um, uh, I'm most excited about uh, the battery life, actually, uh, with Wi-Fi 6, so the, the enablement of uh, uh, our guests uh, so they don't uh, lose uh, their experiences uh, because of battery. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Omid. My name is Omid Moeb. I'm uh, with um, Anaisa Boshimbev, and uh, I'm the global director for uh, Network and Telco, and as such, I'm very excited. Um, I'm a geek at heart, so very excited about Wi-Fi 6, the new technology coming out. But uh, more importantly, it's uh, finally allowing us to get uh, Wi-Fi service to the user, and the users don't have to go look for the service, right? Great. I'm Ed Vanderpool, work at uh, Adventist Health. We are about 22 hospitals uh, along the west coast. We have about 300 clinics, uh, talking about rural. We're, we're kind of spread out. We're a rural type uh, hospital. Um, several hundred beds in each hospital and you know, there's a lot of density. So the biggest thing for us on Wi-Fi 6 is really being able to pull out some of the, the extra access points and have the density that we need because we have a lot of little devices that talk and they take up little slices of bandwidth along the way. And, you know, having Wi-Fi 6, we're going to be able to actually extend that out and make that, that more um, usable. So, uh, so Jamon, you have a really interesting kind of spread of schools across Alberta. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in rural Alberta, uh, a lot of our communities don't have access to broadband or, or really any network connectivity. So the schools aren't just um, a good place to connect. They're actually the hub um, and the primary point of connectivity for our students. So, so one story is uh, that last year we actually had a, a principal report that students were bringing in all of their devices from home. Um, and putting them in their lockers so they could download offline content, which was then <laughs> taken away from the network capacity uh, for the purpose of education. Um, and then also around Christmas, which parents don't seem to think about, is that they buy all of these new devices, wearables, all of these new things, mm -hmm. and they come into the school and everybody has to do their updates. So for us, we have these peak moments that are really not core to our business, yeah. but as a rural school division, we believe that it is part of what we do, is, is helping kids to be connected, to have the same sort of experience that kids anywhere else on the planet have, to make sure that they're connected in, in an, a constantly evolving digital era. And so again, your situation is that because they live in such rural areas, they get better connectivity at school than they do at home or anywhere else. So what do we have for cruise ships, Reza? So you have an interesting environment there. We do, we absolutely do. So uh, it, it, it's changed drastically um, over the past five to 10 years. So uh, 10 years ago, you'd go on a cruise and, and you didn't want to be connected. And now everyone wants mm -hmm. to be connected. In fact, they want to be connected just like they've been connected on land. So um, our thesis is we, we don't want to prevent anyone from missing out on that opportunity, whether it's to keep up with news, uh, share social media uh, feeds, uh, whether it's uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, wh whatever uh, social media outlet there are. In fact, um, over the past few years, social media is even changing. So, so that's one of our, our challenges. And uh, frankly, we spend a lot of time and we're excited that you know, Wi-Fi 6 is here. And uh, it'll enable the density that we require. It'll enable the throughputs that we require. Um, obviously, we're relying uh, mostly on satellite technology. Uh, and um, that, that's also been a challenge. But now, with increased capacity coming online in the industry, together with infrastructure on board that enables our users to, to enjoy 
really a land-like experience. So yeah. we're, we're pleased that we're able to offer that and it's just gonna get better and better with the innovations coming. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Omid, you have a very interesting situation <laughs> with beer in breweries. We do, yeah. So as the <laughs> biggest brewer in the world, really, um, there is no other company that has the same use cases as ours. So we have about 300 breweries worldwide um, and we have something called OT there, uh, operational technology, right? In addition to this, we have an entire back office uh, area, right? Uh, and it's over 1,800 sites on literally every continent mm. in the world. Um, so we have to solve all sorts of use cases, right? We have factory workers that are on break, um, very similar to your state. Um, on the other side, we have, uh, on the IT side, we have um, the explosion of devices. It used to be less than one device per person, and this, is, this started a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and now, I mean, on myself, I have at least two or three devices right now, right? Yes. <laughs> that and so, and yeah, you're more this... than 20 years old. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, this challenge is a, is a good one to have, right? So yes. um, we need to not only deal with densities, but also like with uh, bandwidth, throughput, and those kind of things, like my other peers said. Where Wi-Fi 6 comes in is it, it's an enabler for um, a lot of the business challenges we have. Um, so we're trying to brew the same beer across the world. Um, it doesn't matter where we are. And it has to be most efficient how we brew it, and it also has to be um, the consistent quality, right? Um, and so to guarantee this, we have uh, what we call the brewmasters and their teams, right? And so to, we can't obviously clone people yet, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Where we're going with this is uh, you can have now centralized brewmasters and their teams that control um, all, all of the manufacturing process around the world, around the, around the clock. Um, and, and IoT, which is enabled by Wi-Fi 6, enables them to do so. Excellent. And we'll dive more into that in a bit. Yes. And uh, <laughs> how do you follow beer with healthcare? So, Ed, tell us about <laughs> your <Yes>. situation. <laughs> what is going to be fantastic is having a doctor be able to go from one place to another and using, um, you know, the 5G that's also coming out, basically accompanying those two pieces. Have that doctor be to be online at one location, be able to flow through into the next location or home, depending on um, what the practice is and to be able to actually maintain that connectivity throughout for that doctor. Um, the other piece for us is we have a lot of smaller little IoT type devices. A lot of those are old for healthcare. Mm -hmm. it takes us a while to get caught up. Well, there's a lot of those little pieces that right now, when they try to talk to access points, it, over, it can overwhelm them. So we have to have several access points in one area, and then you've got your channel density and all the other pieces that you have to deal with. So we're really looking at Wi-Fi 6, to kind of take care of quite a bit of that. Well, let's move on now and then talk about um, what we know is that Wi-Fi 6 gives you a new type of connectivity and a new level <clears> of connectivity, <throat> um, but that enables new applications. I mean, I think the first thing is going to be video resolution. Uh, all kids know how to find the highest resolution that they possibly can. <laughs> they always choose the highest resolution. Um, but along with that, we're also seeing a lot of advancements in AR and VR. Um, so really, really high bandwidth demand uh, mm. for you know a short burst of period of time. Um, but you start to look at a classroom where multiple kids are now using a VR kit, and that becomes an incredible challenge for the rest of the network. So the, the scenario is our, our teachers used to go to professional development and come back with random CDs of software. <laughs> and so our IT department would always groan, like, oh, this again. But now what we're seeing is those teachers are coming back from professional development with 30, 60, 90 micro bits or Raspberry Pis. And they don't call IT to ask, how's that going to work in the classroom, right? <laughs> right? And so our role in education as IT practitioners is to, is to make sure that we're affording those opportunities, that we're not restricting teachers because when they try something and it fails on them, they don't just call IT and say, I need it to work. They also have that bad taste in their mouth that I'm not going to try that again. Those, those little robotics pieces didn't work in our classroom and IT just can't provide that. So for us, it's making sure that we're not restricting or creating artificial barriers in the classroom and allowing teachers and, and kids to be creative and explore. Talk about your density. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, another really funny challenge is, uh, I mean, we see this primarily in our elementary schools, but I mean, I, I call it the, the herd of bison sort of scenario. And so what the kids will do is they'll take a little robot that they've programmed to go through this track 
And when one kid sort of successfully does something, all of a sudden all of the other kids follow that down the school. Mm -hmm. So the teachers in the in the you know adjoining classrooms don't know that this is happening. <laughs> so it, it's not about just you know making sure that we can provide density that supports 30 or 60 clients. It's that we can support hundreds of clients as they're roaming throughout the school, mm. and then to start <laughs> adding on IoT as facilities and, and maintenance start to use those sensors. Mm -hmm. We can't have it impacting where window sensors are going down because that herd of bison is moving through the school. <laughs> so it really is a big challenge of not just having equitable distribution of the network across the, the institution. It's about making sure that we can provide capacity as it rolls throughout the building. Yep. That's incredible. Thanks. Now, you're allowed to call your students a herd of bison. Reza, you're not allowed to call your customers <laughs> that, right. but you have interesting customer behavior on cruise ships. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and in fact, we, we also have the, the challenge of having um, hundreds of guests in one area at the same time. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, fun and engaging activities, for example, in the auditorium or around the pool area where um, our entertainment staff will, will create a, a massive party uh, and uh, needless to say, uh, will all the devices are, are out, right? Because yeah. everyone wants to yeah. uh, share and mm -hmm. stream and, and oh, so yeah. forth. And yeah. uh, it's a challenge from an IT perspective to keep everything running because you have bar operations. You may have two or three bars operating at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have hundreds of guests. You have folks that a couple of years ago may have had one device, but now you have multiple devices per family. Yeah. Uh, so okay. all of a sudden, uh, there's a, let's say, a traffic jam of, of packets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's other applications that we haven't thought about. Uh, augmented reality um, from a maintenance perspective, I, I think, could be huge. And you had a point where just people across the ship want to communicate with each other. So using voice over IP, updating that to video over IP, just within the ship alone within the is ship. super important. That's right, absolutely. Because you want to keep, you want to be able to call your your wife or your significant other or your child, for example. So we're looking at again unlocking a lot of different mm. applications to enable our guests, our business, and our crew. So we're very, very excited about that as well. And some of your applications were uh, simple, like delivering food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so th this is an amazing uh, kind of innovation that, that we came up with. Um, pizza delivery. Who, who would have thought, right? Uh, you're on vacation, and, and you, you want pizza. Oh, yes. yeah. And you don't want to walk up to the 10th floor where we have a, a place that has free pizza 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. So now you can take your mobile device, order pizza, you know, we know where you are, and it'll be delivered to you. So that, and you know, yeah. when folks are on vacation, you we want them to immerse themselves in, in the experience and enjoy. Yeah. So that's another application, and, and I think it's just the beginning. What are some of the applications that you or your needs in, in your industry? So the the bison analogy it actually reminded me of our forklifts, the automated forklifts. They're Ooh. quite big and uh, they're quite uh, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we we deployed the automated forklifts a couple of years ago. Um, but they only move in certain areas, and uh, you can imagine we had to build purpose-built Wi-Fi systems, right? Mm -hmm. um, now with Wi-Fi 6, we have actually very similar challenges than you guys. So now we can just replace the access point where it is, and you know increase the density and throughput with that yep. through the through the newer technology and protocols, right? Um, another one is AR that was mentioned. We also are discovering, so we, we don't only have um, brew, brew, brewmasters and their teams, but we also have like very specialized technicians that help uh, fix and maintain the machinery in our brewery. Mm. And so um, we're looking at AR, you know, goggles, hololenses, and those kind of things, um, which requires a lot of throughput, uh, low latencies, and high, high density as well, right? Because yeah. they interact with the IoT uh, systems around them. It takes away the technical challenges, mm -hmm. and it it allows us to um, create you know a, a red button in the network that people can just press and uh, you know leverage the network right for yep. for better purposes. You also had an interest for more IoT sensors, like just sensors to go around. We do, yeah. Today um, uh, the sensors are all on a proprietary network, which is good in case of a network outage, right? But it also comes with its limitations. Um, every time you want to renew something, um, you have to take down equipment, right? And we are 24-7. You guys too, yeah. right? You mm -hmm. can't tell people to stop being sick, right? <laughs> right. Um, and the same with us. We're just, you know, we, we need to do 24-7 uh, operations. Yeah. And so um, downtime is something we cannot afford. 
yep. maybe over Thanksgiving or so. We have a few days where we can take the <laughs> brewery down. <laughs> um, but otherwise, anything we do around the IT systems will take down our production network. Mm. And so systems that allow us to uh, inherently cover for itself yeah. um, and you know, allow uh, in-service upgrades and you know, hot swaps, what we used to call a GIR, um, mm -hmm. those are very important to us, right? Yep. Um, very nice. And how about in healthcare? In healthcare, we, at least right now, we don't have a use for that, but we do have a use for the Google Glass. Ironically, yes, yeah. we're resurrecting the Google Glass. <laughs> um, we actually have certain um, hospitals that we're going to actually trial where we're going to do um, surgeries, and the doctors will actually be utilizing the Google Glass to actually display something back to another, you know, a couple different. Um, you know, technicians and other um, people to help them to actually walk through different surgeries. So it's it's beyond, you know, critical because obviously somebody's getting operated on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece of that is that we actually have robots, ironically, in a couple of our, several of our hospitals actually. We've got two different types. So we've got one that's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of hard, but it's a, it's a smaller device that, that basically roams the hallway. But what it does is it basically goes around and if you have a question, you can go up and ask it a question. Mm. Or if you need directions, it'll give you directions. Cool. <laughs> um, we've also got, there's two different pieces to this, but we've got in major hospitals, if you walk in and it's packed, you know, the waiting room is packed, you can actually go over to a kiosk that actually disembarks, drives up, and you can actually talk to a doctor on this little kiosk. It's a mobile kiosk. And it'll actually flow uh, along the bottom floor as well. That's also wireless. Interesting. And I think like with, with these examples, what's interesting to see is how the applications are really business critical. Like so, and now with the new set that will come, you'll really be able to impact the business even more. Yep. Yeah. Great. So now let's go into just um, the section where, you know, Wi-Fi 6 is about the entire network. Mm -hmm. And you all have responsibility for not just the Wi-Fi, but for the network. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what are you seeing? Like, how does this work all together? And, and Jamon, you're actually using our uh, Wi-Fi 6 access points now. Yeah, we have been. Um, and we've been using M gig as well for a while. Uh, so starting to see the need to go beyond the, the one gigabit per second backhaul per access point. Um, especially, as I say, when, when those students roam in, in large clusters. But that doesn't negate the fact that IT is still responsible for running the business of education within the school infrastructure. Yep. So we either go back 10 years and start to look at traffic shaping and really adding complexity and security to access the network, or we embrace it and we say that Wi-Fi 6 is here, there is technology available that supports densities of 20 to 30 devices per student, yeah. hundreds of devices per classroom, and go with it. And I think that's kind of where we are at right now is that looking at the previous technologies like 802.11ac, even Wave 2, that we need to look beyond that if we're going to survive the next three to five years. Excellent. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, in, our, in our use case, um, our, our new normal is let's not prevent the guest. If, if they want to bring 10 or 15 devices, let them. Another uh, big piece uh, as we move forward is assurance. So making sure that from an end-to-end -end perspective, we're providing the level of service, the experience that, that is second to none uh, from a cruise perspective. So uh, we're very excited about the assurance platform and uh, leveraging kind of the end-to-end -end, uh, visibility and analytics down to the user's device. So if, if, if there's a problem somewhere in the network, uh, we're building uh, off of uh, what Cisco has provided us to to inform our decisions, uh, either to um, uh, fix uh, a specific uh, event or to add uh, density or add uh, features or functions that that yeah. would enable the guest. So, uh, Reza, you use you know the you have the whole end-to-end -end network in That's play. Right. So, can you explain when you say assurance, you're talking across the different domains all the way to wireless? That's right. Yeah, That's can you right. As, that a little bit. Uh, right. Yeah. Sure. As you look at the entire ecosystem, uh, and frankly, um, it really starts at the data center. From the data center to the, to the teleport, uh, to the satellite link, uh, to the onboard equipment, um, routing, switching equipment. Uh, uh, down to the controllers and the access points, down to the user's device. Yeah. So really, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, view uh, as to uh, how do we enable the guest. Yeah, and team members and our crew uh, uh, significantly rely on uh, the network, mm -hmm. the access points, the entire ecosystem to do their jobs, to, yeah. to serve the guests, ultimately. And you've really modernized your network, and you actually jumped in with Cisco Services to help you achieve some of that. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience was there? Sure, yeah. Um, uh, actually, very good. So we uh, leveraged Cisco Advanced Services 
um, about 18 months ago, and uh, we've been very pleased with the results. So we, we took uh, two ships and we completely transformed them uh, from an infrastructure perspective, from a bandwidth perspective, from a, a satellite asset perspective. And uh, we've, I think, together knocked it out of the park because now we have two ships in the fleet that have a guest satisfaction scores that are through the roof. Uh, folks actually never thought that we'd be able to achieve this level of guest satisfaction. And they're, again, highest in the entire fleet. Uh, from a revenue perspective, we've seen a lot of positive results, not just from connectivity, but the other enablements that, that this sophisticated network has brought to our, to our business. Yeah. And again, day in and day out, we're, we're um, coming up with different ideas together with our business partners to really push the limits. Um, and we're excited. We're continuing the deployment. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited uh, to continue innovating. So you frankly. piloted it on a couple ships and That's then are right. now spreading it across. That's right. Just like the pizza results. delivery. Just like yes. the pizza delivery. Exactly. <laughs> like, wow, yep. this is great. It works. OK, deploy. That's big. That's big. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Omid, what does your entire network look like? And how do you how do you help that out? Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. So Wi-Fi 6 is the heart and soul of the network. But just as that's the heart and soul of the network, um, Really, the network has become the heart and soul of the business, right? Um, as the data and the applications are moving to the cloud, they're moving, they're being centralized, and really, end-user devices are being commoditized and simplified. Um, if you don't have a stable network in between, both sides become useless, right? Uh, yeah. Not reachable, right? And so, absolutely, what uh, what my colleagues here were saying, we have to look at the entire stack. It's not just wireless. So we're looking at our telecom strategy, um, and then we're looking at the switching layer, which is very important to us. We cannot take it down. You take down the switching layer, all your access points are gone, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, yeah. So all all of it is very important to us. So for us. <clears throat> Um, we're actually just uh, to the, at the tail end of deploying ACI. So, we're, so if we're talking to end to end, um, our end goal is we have ACI in our data centers. Um, we're going to have DNAC out to actually control um, our branch offices and our other offices. So that kind of rolls right into Wi-Fi 6 and the newer switching um, infrastructure to where our, our end goal, we're looking at assurance as well, um, is to have end-to-end. -end. So yes, you can have your Wi-Fi 6 access point, whatever is connected to it, but we want the control, you know, the security part of that from that point all the way through to our data center yep. in one path so that our security department can look at that and go, okay, we've got that covered. And because, you know, we have HIPAA and, and FI and all the other pieces that we have to maintain. Um, but in order to do that, with the new fabric infrastructure that we can actually build out, and Wi-Fi 6 is obviously going to tie right into this, we can actually have that end-to-end -end goal and yeah. have the assurance that we want. Um, you can have the 24 by 7, which is what we need. The other part to that is, yes, you have to have switches that you know you can actually have up 24 by 7. Um, some of the older technology kind of didn't work as great as we wanted it to. The newer, um, you know, from from us, from the 92, 9300, et cetera, on have been fantastic. They've been solid, easy to deploy, and we can actually extend the fabric right to them. Yeah. So it's it's giving us a lot, a lot more information. In fact, it's giving our security department too much information. <laughs> <laughs> but you're able to see the network as a whole, yeah. and that provides yes. a lot of advantage. And uh, Jamon, so you have uh, a Meraki deployment, so you're using the newest uh, Wi-Fi 6 mm -hmm. uh, Meraki. But just to talk to the whole thing, you also have a very lean IT team. Yeah, we so do. So why don't you talk about that? <laughs> we do. So uh, some days I still wear the hat of uh, network operations. So um, we have a team of six. And because of our, our geographical distribution, um, some of those people are located out of our core office. So they have a remote office. Um, so I have, I have 1.0 employee uh, dedicated to running our network which supports right now, as I mentioned, about 15,000 endpoints on <sighs> just about 400 access points, over 120 switches oh. in 20 remote locations, over 20,000 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I mean, we jumped on Meraki when it, when it first launched, and just with the visibility and the simplicity, oh, yeah. I, I don't know how we could go back to something that isn't as, as simple. It, it really just makes a difference that proactively we can see things that are happening. We can see things that we would have never seen before, like an access point that trips out, say, at 6.07 to 6.09 every day. Yeah. Right? It allows us to diagnose those things that otherwise we likely would have never seen, and we would just hear from a user, once in a while this thing is happening. And, and so for us, one person 
mm -hmm. doesn't have to watch 24-7. I, I still say that what Meraki did is enabled the knowledge of my, of my network technologist to go into the cloud mm -hmm. so that he can then spend his time enhancing and expanding the network rather than yeah. repeating the same tasks. Mm -hmm. We yeah. see the same value. We don't have to build now the monitoring systems, the backend systems around the network. Mm -hmm. It's all coming with the with mm -hmm. the services and the products, right? And so, this is of immense value to us, also in the in the Meraki use case. Um, so let's just close up and say, what is the word of advice that you would give to our audience out here as they start on their Wi-Fi six journey? Number one, I would I would fully embrace that, 100% embrace that, because number one, you're going to get. Um, better quality, you're going to get better battery life, you're going to get better throughput, you're going to get more connectivity um, on a much smaller device, per se. Um, plus, you're going to get a reliability. So that, that's that part. What I would say is really embrace it, because a lot of times, and we're healthcare, we're old, we've been there for a long while, we're, we're, we can be stodgy at times, where we're you know, very slow to adopt new things. Um, but I really believe that with the security and all the other aspects of Wi-Fi 6 and the new infrastructure, that now is the time. Yeah, I second that. So um, I always say our network is like the Golden Gate Bridge. By the time you're done, you need to start over. <laughs> and uh, now that uh, Wi-Fi 6 is out, we, we need to jump on that and totally embrace it. And now is the time to also get yourself engaged, right? You have, uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, time to still understand how do you want to migrate um, and as, as you're ramping out to launch new products, uh, we can also define our blueprint. And one thing that I heard one of the panelists say is um, we have to do it comprehensively, though, right? We yeah. can't just bring up a new SSID with Wi-Fi 6. <laughs> we have to look at the entire landscape we have and how do we, how do we onboard it and yep. how does it support everything. Great. And the Golden Gate Bridge is right behind right. us. So, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> get to the end Freshly and go painted, again. Yeah. <laughs> Reza. Uh, yeah, so uh, never stop innovating. Uh, is, is what I would say, and, and keep an open mind. Um, I think uh, when we get into our box and we're comfortable, uh, it's time to become uncomfortable. And, and that's how, uh, frankly, from our perspective, we've enabled the business. We've pushed the limits, uh, and I think it's just the beginning. There's other applications and other enablements that, that we don't know about. Uh, we're excited to learn. Yeah. Uh, and, and to your point, uh, it's, it's holistic system. It, it has to be holistic. You have to think about the end-to-end -end experience and, and the outcomes you're trying to generate for, in our case, the business. And actually, I think all of us have a business that we support in one way or another. Absolutely. Uh, we have end users uh, mm -hmm. that are uh, guest end users to a certain extent, <laughs> right? So it's, it's a multifaceted problem. Yeah. And I think as we continue to innovate, um, limitless. It's really the opportunity is limitless. Great. What advice do you I, have? I think preparing for an explosion of, of devices that are coming into your environments, whether they be for the purpose of business or just for people who are doing things that are, say, not core to the business, but still part of society and life in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I was going to speak to was uh, that Wi-Fi 6 has other things that support legacy devices and legacy protocols. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so for us right. in, in rural Alberta, we have different demographics, but we also have use cases that are different. Why would I buy an 802.11ax device when I go home and I really have no connectivity. So, so we see a lot of devices that are very sufficient for students when they go home because they've offline their content and they don't really have a lot of connectivity. So for, for several years, we're going to be supporting a lot of legacy devices, but we're still going to have those other devices coming in mm -hmm. that are going to demand those high bandwidth connections. Great. Well, thank you all for sharing the perspectives from your insights uh, and insights from your business because each of your businesses is really unique and very interesting. Okay. Uh, and really just letting people know about the applications and the opportunity ahead and the implications on the entire network is key. Thank you. So we've heard from our customers about the exciting opportunities that Wi-Fi 6 creates. And earlier, you heard from a great panel of industry experts. So I hope you're as excited about Wi-Fi 6 as we are, and you're ready to plan and build for it today. Building your network for Wi-Fi 6 will prepare you for the next wave of applications in business. I like to say you are all developers. You may not be writing lines of code, but you are developing networks for today and for the future. Application developers will write applications that take advantage of the new capabilities of Wi-Fi 6 across the network, and this will transform your business. So to help you go deeper into many of the technologies we discussed here today, you can see the on-demand sessions that cover product deep dives, services, and DevNet. 
To start building Wi-Fi 6 networks and applications, you can go to our new DevNet Developer Center at developer.cisco.com slash wireless. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We believe that Wi-Fi 6 opens up a new chapter in networking. It creates new possibilities for IT and for your business, and we can't wait to see what you do next.